Teal, I've noticed a lot of people, they're thinking, oh, if I want to get into sales and I want to stand out, I have to go to like extreme levels. And that seems to be the most dysfunctional way to go about it. So is there a good counter argument to this? Yeah, I have a really good counter argument because I think that most people are going about sales the wrong way. Um, if you look at sales to the in alignment version, what you have is essentially an opportunity and an offering and a facilitation. That is what sales is at a spiritual level to the positive. But the flip side of that, that negative side is predation. So you can either be in this energy. I mean, it's interesting because it's like you can either, it's like walking a line, be on the side of I'm being predatory and narcissistic, or I'm stepping into this energy of offering something, of providing opportunity, of facilitation. And what's really interesting here is that sales is very much a giving act. But so many people, when they're caught up in that you know, how do I make a sale? How do, how do I get what I want out of my customer? You're, you're actually stuck in this narcissism and nothing will shut down a sale worse than that energy. So in this way, it's pretty interesting because like universally speaking, it's such a, a path actually, one of many paths to awakening and to personal growth because of the fact that it's so easy to fall into these pitfalls when you're on that that path of sales and and so so much of your success in sales is going to be about continuing to, to put yourself back into alignment and to work through these blockages that people have. And also to put yourself in that mindset of ultimately what I'm here to do is to, to serve the person who I'm trying to sell to. And I notice that the, the sales professionals that are the absolute best are the ones who operate with that mentality. And so it, it bothers me immensely when we keep hearing all of these, you know, I, podcasts and articles that are done from people who are just like, this is how to get your client to buy. And we, we need to get into the mentality that sales is not about getting someone to buy something. Um, sales is a service where you help somebody make a decision. And a decision basically coming to a space of clarity is very, very hard for a lot of people. So this also brings us into this next space with sales, which is that you can't, you can't say sales without at the same time bringing in this concept of change. So anytime you're trying to sell somebody something or anytime somebody's thinking about buying something, it is ultimately because of meeting a need. And sometimes we're looking to meet a need or create value for somebody that didn't even know they needed in the first place. But when we're talking about a need, you're, you're talking about change. So if I'm looking to help somebody to buy something new, I'm ultimately asking them to change something, right? And the number one resistance that you start to see with people in terms of their purchasing habits is that they're confronted with the with change. And people are absolutely 100% resistant to change, <laughs> even, even if they want it, you know? So it's like you can't get into the game of sales without also universally speaking, getting into the game of change and helping helping people through that change. And, what I watch is that a lot of, I mean, we're probably going to talk about blockages a little bit more in depth, but when sales professionals have an issue holding people's hands through working through their resistance, I mean, you're going to lose the sale because it's about helping somebody become clear about what they need, make a decision, work through their resistance to making some kind of change. <laughs> You say it in such a beautiful way that resonates 100% with what we're trying to share on the podcast here. And yes, change is hard. And I think, you know, one of the key things from what you said that I thought was quite interesting is how for every single person, like I do a lot of sales training myself, and you're right. When people have struggled with sales, it all comes about their perspective being, oh, I'm so nervous about getting on the phone or oh, I don't know what to say. I, I, and it's I, always I, about I. that. Yeah. And the moment I see somebody being successful and that are wanting to grow as a salesperson, they'll say, you know, I feel like I don't fully understand what, if this product is good for this person, or I don't really know how it's actually going to solve their problem. And that's the kind of anxiety that comes from a very professional salesperson is they're more into the head of the person they're trying to herd to, to, to help than the, 
their own head where they're just filled with this fear paralysis and no action so that to me in itself seems like a, a big blog like why the hell does this happen is it because at the end of the day we all have our narcissistic tendencies and, and you know we have to overcome that through a process of growth and sales just <laughs> serves it on a platter and says if you don't deal with this you're not making money <laughs> yes 